Hello, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the tilt shift effect, both in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. So let's jump in and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop, and actually it's easier to create this effect in Photoshop than it is in Photoshop Elements. So let's start here. Now, if you're using older version of Photoshop, this may not be available to you, so you may need the Photoshop Elements tutorial that comes afterwards. Now, to create a tilt shift effect in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014, we've actually got a filter for that. So let's go up to Filter and then Convert for Smart Filters. I'm going to click OK, then go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Tilt Shift. Now this will open a new dialog box and it'll apply a tilt shift effect to my image straight off the bat. There's a few things happening here. First of all, this circle in the middle, that's a pin. I can move this around. So if I wanted the castle on the hill to be my center of focus, I could do that. I'm going to bring it back down onto the town there. Now the town runs at a little bit of an angle. If I come up to this dot here, you'll see that I get this turning arrow. I can just swing this around and then my depth of field will match the town. There we go. Now a tilt shift effect is caused by a blur. And the blur starts here at this first circle and then goes out to the dotted line where it becomes the full effect. The amount of blur is governed over here. I can make this slider a little bit higher to add more blur. I can also add a little bit more distortion here also. Let's bring that back down to zero. There we go. Now with the blur, I can also do this on the image using this part of the circle. I can just click and I can drag and you can see that I can reduce the blur or I can bring the blur back up again. If I'd like my transition of my blur to be a little bit more narrow, I can click on the dotted line and bring that in. You'll see the top and the bottom work independently. That's quite helpful. Now I'd like my depth of fill to be a little bit more narrow, so I'm going to click on the solid line and bring that in. And then the bottom one also bring that one in. Looking good so far. Let's go up to the top. You can see that I've got a focus here. That's the focus of the bit in the middle. At the moment, it's 100% focused. I can defocus that should I wish. In this instance, I don't want to. I can choose to make this high quality. This is the preview. I'm okay with it being lower quality. I can also save mask to channels. I'm going to click on that. We'll see why in just a moment. That's it. I'm going to click OK. It's going to apply the effect to my image. Now we can see that it's added the blur as a smart filter, and we can go back and change that anytime we like just by double clicking on the word blur gallery. Now there's something else I want to do here. I just want to darken it down a little bit. Now this is where this comes in very handy. I can go to channels and remember I clicked save mask to channels. There it is, my blur mask. If I press control or command and then click on the thumbnail, I'll actually make a selection of that gradient. Let's go back to RGB and layers and then come down and make a very quick levels adjustment. I can then darken down the bits that are meant to be out of focus. That gives me a better effect. I'm going to close that down just for a second. Finally, if this was a toy town, I might expect it to be a little bit brighter. So let's get the hue saturation and brighten those colors up just a little bit. There we are. And in Photoshop, I'd say that was done. So let's go over to Photoshop Elements and see how we do it there. So here I am in Photoshop Elements. And if I go over to the guided area here and then open camera effects, you'll see I've got a tilt shift. Let's click on that. Say add the tilt shift. Let's modify the focus area. I'm just going to drag it out. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy with that. I can refine it here as well. Give it a little bit more blur, should I wish. More contrast even. And I've even got my saturation here as well. Let's click Done. And sure enough, there it is. Now if I click on Expert, you'll see what's happened here. 
I've got a copy of my background image that is blurred and then this image on the top of it with a mask. It's really that simple. So let's do that manually. I'm going to click on the two and then drag those to the bin. There we go. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to go to layer, new, layer via copy. And then I'm going to give that a blur. So I'm going to go to filter and then blur and Gaussian blur and give that about 30 pixels and click OK. Then I'm going to create a mask. Then let's go over and get the gradient tool. And I've got my gradient set to black and white, black to white. My mode is normal, opacity 100. Make sure reverse is unticked and I'm on the reflected gradient. Now I can just click and drag out and there it is. There's my effect. It may need some tweaking here and there, but I can go back and change this as much as I like. Now, of course, you can always use the brush tool as well. A nice feathered brush, really soft brush, and be able to feather that back in or out as much as you like. Let's add a bit of saturation to this. There we go. Now, what about making it a bit darker where it's blurred? That's easy enough. Let's create a new layer and go to edit and fill layer use black click ok a black layer now i'd really like to use the same mask that's easy enough i'm going to press the alt or option key click on the mask and drag it and you'll see i get two arrows that means i'm copying and i can just drop it onto that layer then make sure that layer is still selected just reduce the opacity there we go and we're all done Tilt shift effect in Photoshop, Photoshop CC, and Photoshop Elements. Don't forget to drop by tipscroll.com for even more free Photoshop tutorials. Bye bye for now.